When you open a construction business, it's one thing that is gonna be for certain. You're gonna need to hire people eventually. In this video, we're gonna go over when is the time to hire, on the process of hiring, and for what are you hiring. Let's start when to start hiring. In the construction business, we cannot give ourselves the luxury to kick job to the curve, start saying no to work. We can afford to do that because Let's be honest, our lifespan is depending on our co customers. We cannot be putting customers away. For me, the first indication when I started my business of that I needed help didn't come because I felt tired or I was working 18 hours a day. It came from I started saying not to work. I started rejecting projects that could have been very profitable or they were great jobs for great people that could have mean more business for me. And I had to say no just because I was tied up in the other 15,000 jobs I was doing by myself. Then I realized I had a problem. I had the problem of not knowing how to utilize my time and not knowing how to utilize somebody else's time. Then I started the process of hiring. I hired my first employee, not really knowing how to hire, just because I needed help. That also brings headaches. So in the process of hiring, I started learning where is my time utilized the best, in the business or on the business. I was so early within the company that I needed to be in the business, but I wasn't learning to be on the business. Meaning, in the business is on the tools, head down, doing the work. On the business means overlooking at everything that the company does, from the system, software, and all the other things that you do in the back end of the business billing, estimating, and all of that. I started calculating how much time I spend in my office versus how much time I spend on the field and how much time I spend sleeping. Then I learned that I wasn't sleeping yet and that was not good for me because I was always tired. So I started understanding that the back end of the business was as important as the front end. Then I started learning about the systems and the people who can help me move that side of the business forward because my time wasn't well spent there. So I hired people for the office. Now, these people were not very busy at the beginning, but it gave me the time to learn things I didn't know about. Running an office and being organized about it and having software and automating things and you know making things work by themselves and phone calls and all of these other things. But it allowed me to be on the field for a lot longer than I was before until the time to hire the first employee on the field. Now, once I hired this first person, I came to the conclusion that, oh shit, I'm just hiring somebody, but I really don't have a place for them. I just need them for this job. Once you reach this point, you have to figure out what are you hiring for? Are you hiring for quality worker or are you hiring as mass hiring? You just need help on something. Not every worker or every member of your team is gonna be somebody that stays in your team. So you need to understand on where are you putting them at? Some jobs just require a lot of bodies, either per your contract or per the job, or you need somebody sweeping so the good guys are not wasting their time sweeping. It, you need to figure out where you need them. By figuring that out, the area where you need them, it makes it either easy or hard to hire. If you're just hiring for quantity of people, it's very easy. You put an ad, you put yourself in social media, you tell your friends that you're hiring, and eventually people will come to you. You get to hire 10 guys, move a job forward, you're good to go. But then if you need quality people, then you gotta figure out on what. If you are a plumber, obviously you're looking for a quality plumber. If you're an electrician, you're looking for a quality electrician and so on and so forth. If you're looking for quality, you gotta be able to pay for the quality. Quality people are not cheap, so you need to be prepared for that. Now, if what you're looking is just for cheap labor, then name it as such. Cheap labor is replaceable. Cheap labor is somebody that you don't have to spend a lot of time training because they're not doing any of the uh, hard work that requires to do something more on the professional side. In my company, something that helped me grow was hiring the proper professionals. In a few words, paying what they're worth, not what I think they should be worth. Once I started paying people two, three times more than other companies were paying them, people were actually wanting to come to work for me versus me trying to find them. They were finding me. It made it a little easier for the hiring process because I knew I was hiring quality, not quantity. A great guy, a great worker, a great member of your team is always going to come qualified to be at that position, which means the work ethic, their assemble to do the jobs with their tools, with their sometimes their vehicles, sometimes you provide the vehicle. They come from other companies that had a specific time of work that they needed to be at, so they show up on time. They they don't leave early, they don't cheat you on the hours. Quality people, you don't have to babysit. They go, they do the job. Your job is to line up work for them to stay busy and for them to bring the revenue to the business to pay for their wages. Those guys are great to have because it takes you away from the business for you to find all this work. And then you have the quantity people. 
quantity people are those that are just going for a paycheck to the best place they can work at for whatever period of time they can work for, then that's up to you to find the diamonds in the rough. A lot of times people believe that all they are is a labor because that's what they've been doing for years, but they don't understand that a lot of companies will be looking for a work ethic, somebody that you don't have to worry if they're gonna show up or not. A lot of the workers that you're gonna find while you're hiring is gonna be on the quantity side. People that just need a job and they'll, you know, miss days, the Mondays they're sick because let's be honest, they're hangover. Uh, they don't want to work on the weekends. They, they have better things to do. You never find them. You're always worried if they're going to show up or not. Those guys are temporary. I always concentrate on as I'm finding these workers that might just be temporary as I'm hiring them, that I'm looking for the diamonds in the rough. You always have them. Those guys that are always on time ahead of everybody. They're the last ones on the job. They're asking a lot of questions. They always want to learn more than what you hire them for. So for the process of hiring the people and what to look for them, you need to understand your business better than anybody else to start with. If you've been doing what you do for a long time, you already know what a good person on that specific business does to be the best that they can. Why? Because you started a business for a reason. You were the best one in the place where you were. And start looking for those hints that you had or that some of the people you know have. For me, everything starts with work ethic. If the first day you give them a job, the guy is already late, most likely he'll be late three times a week. He's gonna be late coming back from lunch. He's gonna be early going into lunch. He'll be the first one of the job site. I don't care how hard he wants to work if he only wants to work for the hours he chooses to work. I start looking for hints of personality, of how they match with the team, how well they get along with others. Are they willing to learn other trades besides the one they are good at? If I have a guy that comes to the business and says, hey, I'm a great drywaller, the first thing I'm gonna hand him is a hole in the wall, show me. If they can show you that they can do the work, they're doing it in a proper amount of time, they're clean out there doing it, they clean after themselves, then now I know I have somebody I can work with. Then I can start the process of training them on how our business works. What do we expect from our team members? What do we expect for the quality of work that they give? Because let's be honest, almost everybody that comes from another company comes with bad habits. One bad apple can rot the rest of the box of apples. I don't want to bring somebody into the business that is going to make the good workers I have want to leave. I don't want to put a manager in place that is going to make my workers leave just because of his ego. We don't allow that in the business, so you got to know what you are willing to live with and live without when you're hiring. The process of hiring is not a, a specific technique to say, well, I got the right one. It, everything comes from a feel. You're going to feel the people. You're going to see what they can do. You're going to see how others react to them. You're gonna see how clean they are, and let's be honest, if you put them by themselves on a job and you get a complaint once a week, then you know you have a problem worker. Not every employee is fit to work for you or to work in your business. You gotta know what your business is gonna be known for and then hire people that are willing to do the work that takes to be known for that specific thing. That's the bottom line. You're not gonna make your workers care for the business as much as you do because they don't have the same scheme in the game or the risks that you take by being in business. But they do have to follow with the uh, culture that you have put into your business. What is it that you guys do on a regular basis? What is it that makes you different than all the other companies? If they're not even willing to put up with that, why would you put up with them? Keep your process simple by keeping it with your work ethic, keeping it with the culture in the company, Make sure that they're doing things for your clients the way the clients want them, not just how you want it. They have to be polite and their customer service has to be taught if they, are not, if they don't have certain good areas that you can work with. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe. And then if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'll be happy to respond. Hope to see you guys in the field.